Hi, my name is Matt with We're in the Rockies, and my wife Cheryl is behind the camera. We both used to be teachers, so in this video, we're gonna give you a Colorado 101, a crash course on visiting the great state of Colorado. And we're gonna do it in a series of numbers here. So the first number that I have for you is the number one, which is one mile high. That is the city of Denver, known as the Mile High City. There are actually markers in Denver on the state capitol. That is what Denver is, is actually a mile high, okay? But the rest of the state varies quite a bit. So Colorado is kind of split into two. The eastern half of Colorado is plains and it's much lower. But the western half of Colorado, where we are here, this is Maroon Bells behind me, is obviously the Rockies. This is the mountainous part of Colorado that everybody wants to visit. And this gets way higher than a mile high above sea level. In fact, right now we are at around 9,000 feet above sea level, I believe, which is twice the height of where I live. So this is kind of crazy. So gotta be aware of nosebleeds here when you visit Colorado. Literally, my son got a nosebleed today and I saw another kid over in the restroom that had a nosebleed today. So it's kind of a real thing. Okay, the next number to know is the number 14, as in 14er. This is a term you need to know if you visit Colorado because they are very proud of their 14er mountain peaks. That is mountain peaks that are over 14,000 feet above sea level. Some of these mountain peaks you see behind me are probably 14ers. Right now we are at Independence Pass. We're probably at about 10,500 feet. I know that several of these peaks surrounding me here are 14ers and uh, we're heading into Leadville right now, which is Colorado's highest city. The 14ers is kind of a badge of honor for people to hike to the top of the 14ers. And so there's kind of a, a club of people out there that are trying to check off hiking to the top of these mountain peaks. There are two 14ers though that you can just drive to the top of, Mount Evans and Pikes Peak. So if you're not a hiker, you can drive to a couple of them. And I'm Cheryl, the other half of We're in the Rockies. As you drive around Colorado, you're gonna see things named Columbine, you're gonna see flower symbols, and what they're talking about is this beautiful Colorado Columbine. I've noticed them on our hikes this last week, and they really are a gorgeous flower. I can see why they pay so much tribute to this flower on a lot of their signage in Colorado. The next number to know is the number 58. There are 58 14ers in Colorado. I mean, that is amazing. Like Utah has beautiful mountains as well. We love, we're from Utah, we love Utah. Great and gorgeous mountains as well, but no 14ers in Utah. I don't think there are any 14ers in Montana. I can't remember Idaho and I think Washington has, has some 14ers, but Colorado has the second tallest peak in the lower 48 states. It might be that one over there. I'm actually not sure, but Mount Elbert. I know we're going into Leadville and we'll be able to see Mount Elbert from Leadville. So we might be, it might just be on the other side right there. But, but anyway, Colorado has the second tallest mountain peak in the lower 48 states, 58 14ers, which tells you something about how high Colorado actually is. Okay, the next number to know is the number 59. Why the number 59? For the 59ers. You may be familiar with the football team, the 49ers, named after the 49ers of 1849 that went to San Francisco for that big gold rush. Lesser known, however, is the 59ers. In 1859, gold was struck in Denver and the 59ers came to Colorado. The 1859 Colorado gold rush is what really helped to start to fill in the Rocky Mountain area. There are so many mountain towns in Colorado that were founded due to mining gold and silver and other minerals. Colorado was built on that 1859 gold rush. Okay, the next number that you need to know is the number four. Now there's quite a few things that the number four applies to in Colorado. So first of all, there's four sides to Colorado. There's four corners to Colorado. Colorado touches the Four Corners area, which is the only place in the United States where four states meet up. Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado all meet up at Four Corners Monument, way down in the southwestern portion of the state. There are four seasons. This is a four season state to visit as a tourist. I mean, it's famous for its winter ski resorts, but it's also just amazing in the summer. Weather's amazing. There's so many things to do. All the roads are open. You get to drive these amazing scenic drives. You get to go to the national parks. Incredible, incredible stuff to do during the summer. 
Don't forget about fall. The fall foliage drives are some of the most famous in Colorado. Fall is a great time to visit because you're driving through these Rocky Mountains with the changing colors. Incredible. I'd probably say spring is the least attractive time to visit because you're kind of a little early on for some of the roads to open. The skiing is winding down. It's a little muddy, so I'd probably avoid the spring if possible, but a four season state for sure. And the other four is that there are four national parks. You got Rocky Mountain National Park, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, Great Sand Dunes National Park, maybe my favorite one of them, Mesa Verde National Park down the Southwest. Okay, the next number to know is the number zero, as in zero Olympics. This incredible state that is so famous for its skiing and its winter sports has never hosted the Olympics before. It's not because they're not able to, they've got the infrastructure, they've got the skiing, they've got the mountains, they've got everything in place, but they don't want it. The citizens do not want the Olympics here. They did make a push at one point to get them, but the citizens kind of rebelled and they called it off, so they have never hosted the Olympics. Okay, the next number you need to know is the number 13. There are 13 scenic byways in Colorado. So scenic byways is like a, a national designation for a very beautiful road. I am standing on Guanala Pass right now above the city of Georgetown. This heads off into the mountains on a very switchback road that heads up over the pass. As you can imagine, Colorado's near the top of the list in rankings in, num in the states with scenic byways. If you visit Colorado and you get in the mountains, you're gonna find yourself on one of these scenic byways for sure. Definitely, that's one of the highlights of visiting Colorado is just the beautiful scenic drives, especially in the fall. And while we're on that topic, the next number is number two. Two of those 13 roads are designated as all American roads. Now, I had to look this up uh, last week because I wasn't quite sure what an all American road meant. And what that means is that the road is not only unique and scenic, but it's also a destination unto itself. It is a thing that you have to go do just to do it, you know, because it's just an attraction in and of itself. Those two roads are the Trail Ridge Road in Rocky Mountain National Park, which we'll be doing in a couple days here, and the Million Dollar Highway in the San Juan Mountains in the southwestern portion of the state. That road is just an unforgettable experience. Both those roads, unforgettable experiences. You are up on top of some of the highest mountains in Colorado, just overlooking this gorgeous valleys on both sides and you're up there with the tundra. It's just amazing. Utah has one All-American road. Colorado has two All-American roads. These are just unforgettable experiences to drive. While I'm here in Georgetown, I'm gonna knock out another one here and that is the number 10. There are 10 scenic train rides in Colorado that you can do, at least by my count. I'm not quite sure if I got all of them or not, but I think there are 10 scenic train rides. A lot of these are steam engine train rides through the mountains. The city of Georgetown here has one. It's called the Georgetown Loop Railroad. And we did this yesterday and it's just a beautiful and relaxing, breezy, scenic ride through the canyon here over a creek and you get to hear the chugging of the steam engine and all that which is pretty fun i know a lot of you are real train enthusiasts and if you come to colorado you have many options to choose from all over the state some of the more famous ones are the durango to silverton train leadville train is up the road here we were actually debating between the leadville train and the georgetown train we ended up choosing the georgetown train from my understanding both very nice there's a train that goes from colorado into new mexico so right down there on the border the royal gorge train my understanding is that's kind of a short ride anyway many different train rides to choose from oh and then you can also do the red rocks to rockies amtrak train so that's another thing that people really enjoy are these amtrak trains because you're really covering a lot of ground and you're going through some really beautiful scenic areas so the red rock to rockies train there the amtrak train so just tons of trains to choose from if you visit colorado finally i'm not going to cover a number here but my last topic here is mountain towns colorado's mountain towns there's just tons of these little towns like georgetown that are in the mountains here most of these were mining towns some of them have converted into tourist towns or ski towns like aspen colorado super expensive ski town breckenridge kind of the same way some of them, like Leadville and Georgetown, they haven't really converted into ski towns, but they're trying to build some tourist industry, like Leadville's playing up on their mining history. Georgetown here has reconstructed the Georgetown Railroad. So there's just a lot of little scenic mountain towns. They all tend to offer similar things, 
like e-biking trails, kayaking or, or water. You know, a lot of them, they have lakes nearby, like the Georgetown Lake is close to here. So you can do some water sports, paddle boarding, things like that. They also offer, um, of course, hiking, train rides, maybe even zip lines, gondolas that go to the top of the mountain, mountain coasters that you can ride down. I mean, most of them tend to have kind of similar offerings. So as you're on your big Colorado road trip, you know, you want to kind of look at which things you want to do in each city, you know, try to get a variety of experiences in each city. You don't want to pay $60 for a gondola ride in every mountain town that you go to. So kind of keep that in mind as you plan it out. Now we actually have a top of the Rockies travel guide for you that kind of takes care of that, that gets you through all these Colorado mountain towns and gives you the best experiences in each one. So check that out on our website. We're in the Rockies. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, go west, young traveler.